In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use WaveBurner. Uh, WaveBurner is what we use to make CDs. It's this icon here, and when you click it, you will be presented with uh, an empty window, typically. If not, you just go to File, New, and create a new, new document. The first thing I do, and I would like you guys to follow suit on this, is get rid of the mix lane. This is the mix lane here. We don't use it. It just makes it harder to see your waveform. And in most cases, we don't need to see the list view, so we turn that off. Remember, you can always turn these things back on just by toggling. But for our purposes of seeing the waveform, we want to start with uh, a nice big waveform view. You can hit Command F to import an audio file, or just go to the file menu and click on Import Audio. We're going to navigate to this file that we've been working on which was uh, the um, Lucas Simpson. Let's see, where that, where is that at? Let's see, I think uh, 2015, there it is. Lucas Simpson bounces. And we're going to go with this AIFF file here that was created. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this WAV file and see if it looks right. In this case, it looks pretty good. Um, I'm a bit... Uh, curious why we, we didn't quite get it as loud as I would expect it to see. Uh, remember that these these waveform peaks represent a volume. So over here in what I assume is the jazz set, let's see. Yeah, it gets pretty loud. It's getting close to the top. I mean, it, it's, it's getting to the top. But really, it probably could have been bounced out a little hotter, which goes back to the L2 threshold. The L2 threshold probably should have been set down just a little lower uh, to get a, a bit hotter output. I also would like to point out that sometimes if you really make a boo-boo and have your master level or that main mix fader down, you might see a file come in that's really small. Maybe it's you know just like this big here all the way across. If that happens to you, or should I say when that happens to you, you did something wrong in the bounce. Go back to logic. Just, just close out of WaveBurner, go back to Logic, figure out why the volume's too low, make sure your output's right, and come back. In this case, uh, knowing that this was for the demo, we have this file just a little cooler than it's supposed to be, and I don't like that. So I'm going to make another new file. I'm going to hit Command-F, and I'm going to import Lucas Simpson Demo, AIFF. I'm going to close the mix lane and lists. And now, look at that view. See how that looks a lot hotter across the board? It's not clipping terribly, I don't believe. And um, let's go ahead and uh, hit Command tilde to see the other window. See the difference? OK. You'll also notice that in this first file, it looks like uh, our student tech bounced out the intermission. Yeah, just a bunch of nothing. In the other file that I did, notice how I cut out the intermission here, and it just goes from one piece, and so I did that in the cleaner bounces video. So now let's go ahead and head back over here to the start of the file, now that we have the right file to make our CD, and talk a little bit about navigation in WaveBurner. Uh, this top bar up here is the navigation window. I can, uh, let's zoom in horizontally, you'll see how that window up there changes this little view here I can drag that to the left or to the right to see a different portion of my mix and if I drag up it zooms out if I drag down it zooms in so I can drag this all the way to the left and then go up and down until I see just as much of the mix as I want to see to start working on the CD that's the best way I've found to navigate now you can also and sometimes you do this as well. You put your mouse down here, you click on the timeline, and you can use your mouse wheel to scroll up and down, left and right. So you can do that. It's a little frustrating. Lo uh, WaveBurner has kind of a sluggish interface. Uh, my home computer is a bit better. So anyway, very important to note that uh, when you once you got that down, that's 90% of the battle is getting your navigation down. Uh, this is the beginning of the file where we bounced it. You'll see it here a little bit of applause <coughs> from, the, from when Lucas walked out. And you'll see that this file starts at exactly two seconds. 
I mean exactly two seconds. You don't want to screw that up. So don't click and drag the file. Leave it there. So if you click up uh, right on the edge of the file, you'll see the icon change. You can actually drag and get your the music. See the music start there? I'm going to bring that over and just bring it a skosh. I'm going to put my cursor right there and zoom in even further. There's the first piano note. I'm going to put a slight, ever so slight fade in. I'm going to come back here and click, and I'm going to listen. That sounds nice. Now I'm going to drag my mouse up, find the end of the first piece, which is right there. That looks like applause. That looks like applause. Okay, now I'm going to hold my command key. Notice the icon change to a pair of scissors. I'm going to click, snap. Okay, we're going to drag this over, and I am going to take the end of that applause. I'm going to scroll in just a little bit more on my area, my work area here. Let's drag it a little to the left. And we're going to drag this back, drag this over. We're actually assembling these two applauses, cutting out the dead time in between. We're going to listen. <laughs> So that was pretty seamless. And there is the next piece. So I'm going to move this by clicking on the right half of this icon down here. I can move my track ID. I'm going to, again, just like logic, you need to get good at scrolling in. I don't want it too close. I don't want this track index on top of the music. It needs to be back just a hair and that's you know that changes depending on how far you zoom in so now let's see how this sounds here's the end okay let's see how long this applause is i'm going to put my mouse here and i'm going to see how it says 307 and that's 325 that's almost 20 seconds of applause that's probably more than we need i can shrink that down just by dragging this back a little uh, might be a little louder here than there. Let's listen. <laughs> That's good. That's a nice natural decay. Now, another thing that you sometimes need to do is you need to change your crossfade handles. Click on the big one here, drag it straight up, drag this one straight up, and now we have an equal power crossfade. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> actually sounds a bit more natural okay this one's done I'd say that's a that's a good good amount of space there I'm gonna go up here I'm gonna drag to the next uh, break and see where that is okay here it is <laughs> scroll out let's see let's drag over here it looks like uh, let's see what's that there oh that's a short piece okay so here's just some dead time when he's off stage Quickly, full speed, click uh, that, drag that over, get the end of that applause, work to the end of that applause, drag it back, come back here, scroll in, give it a listen, <laughs> drag this up. I didn't like that. Let's move this back so we get more of a natural decay on the applause. Everything, we're going for natural here. That sounds better. Now, let's take note. It looks like the music doesn't start for a while on this one. And with the uh, wave burner, you're just going to have to get used to doing this. This is probably one of the more challenging parts of this job based on my experience with previous techs. This is too long. I don't want to wait forever. So I'm going to hit the control command key again. Click that. Drag this over. Crossfade that on itself. And here's a good time to note. See how... This is now, I lost my equal power crossfade. I'm going to move that up. And because I don't want to keep doing that, I'm going to do one little piece of housekeeping here. I'm going to hit the right arrow key and go to the very end of the project. And we're going to do our fade out, or the, the final applause. 
I'm going to get to the right edge of my window here. I'm going to drag 10 seconds, 10-ish seconds, and I'm going to put this right in the middle and drag straight up. I'll come back to this later. Now I have my equal power crossfade. The next time that I make a cut in this file and I do a cross dissolve, it's going to assume this is this equal power exponential fade out is the one I want. And I'll show you what I mean next time we make a cut. So let's scroll in here, go back to what we had. And now you'll see I have two index markers. Because I did that cut to get rid of the silence, I don't need to, so I'm going to select that one, hit the delete key, gra grab this one, and find the start of the music. That's good. Now let's see how much time we have. Okay, that's a good amount of time, but because things are a little different here, I'm going to mess with this. Did you notice how loud the uh, the noise in the hall was at the end of the applause compared to the beginning of the applause? Listen again. It goes down to some silence here. That's because, in most cases, an audience shuffles around in their seats and they make more noise at the end of a piece and they're quiet at the beginning of the piece. So I'm going to actually butts with this curve until I like the way it sounds. <laughs> That's a bit smoother. I'm even going to help that fade out just a little by dragging that icon over. <laughs> not bad, not bad. The idea is to go for natural. Now, this looks like a pretty long applause. I can probably drag this back a bit just to shorten up the CD. Not quite natural. I'm going to go take that back right there. That should be good. Okay, so that is how you uh, slice this up. Now, a little bit about track indexing. This is a difficult concept for many. Um, obviously, the beginning of every piece gets a, an index. I don't believe there are any movements in here, so I won't use this as an example, but just to explain we always index the movements. If I wanted to add a track index, I would just put my cursor, my, my playhead, wherever I want it, and I hit the T key. I've just created a new track. I could also, let's undo that, I could just click down here in the, the track, or above in that one, because there's, there's two tracks. I could put a, a marker in there just by clicking. Now I've got a new track index. I could zoom in. I mean, this is assuming this was a movement. Maybe it is a movement. Let's listen. Ah, what do you know? We do have a movement in this particular concert or recital. So let's talk about movements. I'm going to go ahead and just delete that for now by hitting the delete key. And we're going to listen. And watch the counter up here. 38. Okay, so that one ended at 38. This one starts at about 50. That's about 12 seconds. That, to me, is the limit of how much time is comfortable between movements. Yes, I know we're watching a tutorial video here, but I'm trying to teach you the finer points of making a CD. Um. Okay, so that was about 12 seconds. Sometimes it can be 20 seconds. 20 seconds is too long to wait for a movement change. In this case, it's 12. I could conceivably just go ahead and, and s see the icon there. I could line this up, put my marker there, and probably call it done and, and, and not worry about it. But because we're teaching you how to do things right, we're going to go ahead and hit our Command key, slice this, crossfade it on itself. Notice how I have the proper equal power curve here. And what I really stress to you recording text is to get the movement breaks right. If, take notes on this, if the movement break is 10 seconds or less, leave it alone. Just let it be natural. Put your marker down here and just drop a new index where the, where the movement starts. 
if it's 10 seconds or less. If it is over 10 seconds, then you hold the command key, you cut it, and you bring it down to somewhere in the 6 to 8 second range. Okay, let's listen. Or actually, we don't even have to listen. We can just find the end. 37. So we're going to want to go out to about 43. This should be at about 43 or 44, somewhere in there. So that's about right. Right half of the marker. Drag it back over. And now let's listen to what we have here for a movement break. Okay, kind of a bummer that somebody made a bunch of noise in the hall, but we can't do squat about that. Um, yes, it's kind of irritating, but this is a live performance, and sometimes people cough or make noises that we're, we're just wishing weren't there. In this case, we, we just have to accept it. Once again, I will stress, and I'm doing this because of the problems I've had teaching recording techs this seemingly simple concept. If the movement break is 10 seconds or less, leave it alone and index it. If it's over 10 seconds, cut it, make it shorter to about 6 to 8 seconds, and index it. Listen, use your ears, keep it natural. If by chance there happens to be a cough somewhere in the middle and you can strategically cut right where that cough is and, and, tr and may use that as part of the trim out, great, go for it. But that's how you do movement breaks. Okay, so you continue on with this process to the end of the CD. Let's just do one more full speed. Here's where the jazz section meets the other section. You don't have two uh, applauses that you can really tail together, unless it's this. Okay, who cares? I'm going to hold the command key, find the beginning of the jazz piece. It's over there somewhere. Let's bring that back. Let's cross dissolve that. <laughs> okay, right there, right there with the cough. And we might index out there. I'm going to bring this back and get rid of some of that other nonsense. Uh, bring that there. Let's listen to this. Okay, that sounds good. Can't do anything about the cough. Let's hit the right arrow key, go to the end. Now, we had this 10-second fade-out there, remember? But this is the wrong curve for a fade-out. I now take this straight down. I scroll out, and I see my applause here. Now I need to grab the right edge of my window, which sometimes is difficult to do. Sometimes you grab the whole screen. And that happens. If that happens, just let go, drag it back out until you do get a hold of the waveform. Give the waveform a couple seconds of applause. Hoo-ha, hoo-ha, yay, yay, yay. And um, let's scroll out. Let's see what we got. <laughs> Notice how we get a nice, smooth fade out. This icon comes all the way down, straight down in the middle. Nice, smooth fade out. Okay, so we haven't actually finished slicing up our entire CD, but that's it for this demo. <coughs> uh, except for the final thing of checking your index marks. So I scroll out, and I go to the beginning of the CD by just using my arrow keys or my mouse. You know, I can click back here at the beginning, and I hit my right arrow key. That takes me to the index, and I hit the space bar to check. <laughs> spacebar to stop. I hit the right arrow key and I check my next start. That's good. Stop. Forward. That's good. One more. All sounds good. Now occasionally you make a boo-boo and you let's say you actually ended up with a extra marker that you forgot to delete. This is where we catch that. Let's go back out and assuming we made a mistake. I come back here. Fine, stop, forward. Oh, there shouldn't be an index there, should there? So I've, I see that now. I missed it. I delete it. Hit my arrow key. And I check my entire CD. And I make sure my fade out at the end's right. I zoom out, and I am ready to burn. All I need to do is click the burn button up here. 
and it will ask me for a CD. I'll put the CD in and we'll burn the CD at 16x speed. So that is the big long version of how to use WaveBurner. And now I'll make some videos that are more specific to those individual tasks. Thank you for watching.